educative video of microsurgical management of large accessory nerve schwannoma in the posterior fossa. This 69-year-old lady presented with headache, neck pain, and giddiness, swaying while walking. Examination showed glass of was for 15, no motor deficits, ataxic gait, swaying to the right side with the dysarthria. With this, she was investigated to contrast MRI scan brain showed large right cerebellar well capitulated tumor 5.4 cm vertical, 5.6 cm transverse, and 4.8 cm anterior posterior with a significant pressure over the cerebellum, brainstem, midbrain, and pons and medulla oblongata as shown here in these studies with the moderate ventriculomegaly. With this, we thought the possible ependymoma, glioma, hemangioblastoma, and metastasis. She was taken up for surgery. She underwent in a prone position, paramedial suboscular craniotomy, microsurgical approach, and the opening of the dura to the, to the, with the base towards the transfer sinus, and opening of the system, the magna, lateral medullary system, and complete microsurgical excision of the tumor. The dura matter is open in the cervical starting from the C1, C2 region superiorly to the base on the transfer sinus. The paramedian dura is open. During the dural opening in the paramedian region, the straight sinus is opened and usually the release small amount of bleeding from the opening of the straight sinus. We can ligate the straight sinus as shown here. The inferior part of the dura at the level of foramen magnum, the transverse cut is made and the whole dura matter is opened with the base towards the transverse sinus as shown here. This is the dural cut from the foramen magnum laterally and taking on to the foramen around the foramen magnum and going superiorly and that's the superior most part of the dural opening and flap turned on the transverse sinus. During this procedure, there will be some amount of ooze from the dural edges. They need to be coagulated and those bleeding needs to be stopped. Now we can see the cisterna magda is open and this cisterna magda opening is very important to access the tumor. And from here, the cisterna magda continues as lateral medullary system at the inf or the inferior part of the cerebellopotine angle. Again, it continues superiorly on the vermis and the arachnoid is split on the vermis and the arachnoid is open and the cerebellar hemisphere is released. Now the lower cut end lateral part of the dura is first sutures are placed and retracted. Now we can see the tumor into the lateral medullary system and there appears to be a narrow root on the surface of the tumor which is enlarged and, and the going on the tumor. So the diagnosis here would be a schwannoma originating from the accessory nerve. Now that is the mother root from where the tumor is originating is understood, con confirmed and divided. Now, as well, once we know it's an extra cerebellar mass, now the dissection process varies. Now we have to excise it from the extra cerebellar location. Now you can see the vertebral artery and pica origin coming into view. The next important step is to devascularize the tumor capsule from the surface all around. Now we put a wet cotton on the vertebral artery and protect it so that during the dissection process inadvertently you should not damage or, or injure the vertebral artery. The arachnoid is opened laterally and into the inferior cerebellopontine angle system laterally and inferiorly and arachnoid is thickened. Once we go little superiorly into the lateral, medullo, uh, lateral medullo, medullary system you will see the, the lower cranial nose, 9th, 10th, and 11th cranial nose, Judah Pusa. 
there is a good amount of arachnoidal plane which is identified and the cerebellum is protected and gently elevated and this, the superior part of the tumor starts coming into view and the surface of the tumor is coagulated. This helps in achieving the uh, reducing the blood supply to the tumor and as you keep coagulating, tumor starts shrinking. There is one more superiorly a small rootlet which is adherent or attached to the tumor. It is coagulated and divided. Probably this tumor is originating from the cervical branches of the accessory nerve where which starts from C1 to C5, ascends onto the lateral aspect of the posterior fossa, cerebral pontine angle and goes up, joins the cranial accessory at the jugular foramen and becomes one. So probably it is originating from the spinal accessory part intracranially at the level of foramen magnum and causing the mass effect on the inferior aspect of the cerebral. Now the tumor is exposed quite well and the surface of the tumor is coagulated which I mentioned to you earlier helps significantly in reducing the blood supply number one and shrinks the tumor so that you will get some space to excise the region. Now the capsule of the tumor is opened once the significant devascularization is done. Now you can see the tumor there, it is firm and inside part appears to be necrotic, biopsy is taken and internal debulking is done with bipolar and suction and surgical as ultrasonic surgical aspirate. Now inner part of the tumor has good amount of vascularity you can see there and which is seen on MRI also with the significant blood vessels. Now the internal devascularization is done, the blood vessels are coagulated and, and the bleeding is reduced. Now internal debulking is done further all around, inferiorly, medially, superiorly and laterally. Again, that helps in reduction of the capsular size and helps in, in good excision. Now that is the superior part of the tumor. Now the superior part of the tumor is debulked, superior and lateral part is reduced in size. The tumor in internal debulking is done and tumor is reduced in size as shown here. Once we do the significant amount of debulking, now the capsule of the tumor starts gently separating from the inferior surface of the cerebellum. All the steps here need to be very slow and gentle and keep step by step. That is the lateral and superior part of the capsule of the tumor which is getting the blood supply from the cerebellar branches of pica and anterior cerebral, cerebellar artery. Now the devesc further devascularization is done and the arachnoid over the tumor is cut. It is an it's an intra-arachnoidal lesion. And once you open the arachnoid, the cerebellum starts separating. That's a lateral and superior part of the tumor, which is now separated from the undersurface, lateral surface of the cerebellum, inferolateral surface of the cerebellum. And the separated tumor capsule is coagulated and further reduced in size. As we go superiorly and laterally, you, you will Will, you will come across the lower cranial nerves and going into the for, jugular foramina along with 9th, 10th and 12th, uh, 11th cranial nerves. Now you can see how easily the tumor capsule is separating from the undersurface of the cerebellum, inferior surface of the cerebellum and we keep devascularizing and coagulating and reducing the blood supply. Now that is the superior and lateral part of the tumor. Surface is again coagulated and vascularity is reduced. Once you get the good plane of cleavage between the tumor and the gliotic cerebellum, the inferior part of the cerebellum, we need to maintain that plane of cleavage during the further dissection. Now superiorly and laterally, the tumor is separated from the undersurface of the cerebellum 
Now we are going medially and superiorly and separating the tumor from the medial part of the cerebellum and the superior cerebellum. As you go deeper and deeper, you will get some more blood vessels from the pica and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery, some branches from the vertebral artery. We need to understand this and keep gently coagulating these feeders onto the capsule and venous drainage needs to be coagulated and no blood loss should be done. And if you meticulously keep dissecting and coagulating, hardly there will be any blood loss. As you see here, we have not lost more than about 10 ml of blood during the complete dissection of this large tumor. Now you see we are going deeper and deeper and see the deeper feeders from the pica going into the tumor, coagulated and cut. Tumor capsule slowly starts separating because already you have reduced the tumor capsule in, in size and the good amount of you are maintaining the good plane of separation. Now that is the inferior most part of the tumor and that is the cerebellum, below velar region of the cerebellum and that is adherent, it is coagulated and divided. Now the tumor appears to be separated from all around inferiorly, laterally, superiorly and medially and that is a small amount of cerebellar adhesion, gliotic cerebellar adhesion on the inferior and medial aspect of the tumor that is coagulated and separated. Now the deepest part of the tumor is also separated and tumor capsule is freed and gently the capsule is held and removed in one piece as shown here. This is done after confirmation of complete separation all around 360 degrees. Now that is the normal gliotic cerebellum. There is some amount of bleeding from the deeper parts of the tumor uh, adherence to the surface of the sub inferior surface of the cerebellum is coagulated and hemostasis is achieved. We keep washing the area with the peppering saline to prevent vasospasm of the important neurovas the vascular structures, vertebral artery and branches. Now you see the microsurgical anatomy at the lower end of the cerebellopontine angle and the lateral medullary system. You can see the vertebral artery, pica origin, lower cranial nerves, 9th, 10th, 11th nerves, they are opening from the medulla oblongata and going to the jugular foramen. They are elongated and stretched the blood supply perforators from the vertebral artery going towards the medulla oblongata and the cervical medullary junction. And you can see the rootlets of the, the accessory cranial, accessory nerve, cranial part as well as the cervical part going in laterally and joining the ninth and the tenth cranials to emerge from the foramina, jugular foramen. That is the posterior inferior cerebral artery part 1, part 2 and part 3. That is jugular foramen, lower cranials entering there, ninth, tenth and eleventh. This is the, the cranial vertebral junction, medulla oblongata and perforators going to the cranial vertebral junction and medulla oblongata. Absolute hemostasis is achieved. We ask the anesthetist to increase the blood pressure by 30 to 30 millimeters of mercury before we close. From the absolute hemostasis, this is very important because these are a lot of perforators and the capsular vessels which are separated during the dissection process. They should not bleed postoperatively. The cerebellum is lax and is empty tumor bed and cerebellum is pulsating bed. Dura is brought down. The inferior part of the dura is, is stitched first on both sides, medially and laterally as shown here. And the lateral part of the dura is closed. Close the dura as much watertight as possible as shown here. And the cervical part of the dura also is closed. And the bone is replaced and fixed and the area is closed in two layers. This is the dural closure, complete dural closure.
fixing of the craniotomy bone with the bone dust which we collected is spread to have a good bone infusion. Same day evening, we get a CT scan bed done. Tumor is removed completely, no hemorrhage, no swelling, no infarcts and ventricles are normal. You can see the fourth coronal sagittal actuators. This is a patient post-operative on day two, known neurological deficits, power is 5 by 5 in orally. Sternomastoid and trapezius deficits are not there because the tumor was originating from the small rootlets. This is our neuroanesthesia team, treating physician and neuro rehab team. Our presence online with more than 585 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided educative neurosurgical operative procedural videos on our YouTube neurosurgical video atlas. Thank you very much for viewing.